Дуру, дуру, салам. Здравствуйте. Как дела? Очень хорошо мне. Ну хорошо. So, what if Israel, the last style bender, Arasanya, fights Hamzat Borz Chemayev? What would happen? Okay. So, this one, instead of calling it outright, I'm going to lay out the keys to victory for both fighters and then uh, come to a conclusion, okay? Right now, my money would be on Hamzat, okay? But this thing is a little too close at the moment. Okay, here's why. So, Israel Adesanya is faster than Paulo Costa. Okay? We know that. Paulo Costa um, is quick, but he didn't... It wasn't that he wasn't quick enough to glue himself to Israel Adesanya. It was that he got hurt, he got scared, he got timid, and just didn't go in for it. If he had of been able to glue himself to Adesanya and took it to Jitsu, down up, down up a couple of times, he would have had a better shot. All right, so do we think Chimaev, um do we think Chimaev wouldn't be able to take down Israel Asanya? And I don't think so. I think he, I think Chimaev can take down Israel Asanya. Okay, this is important because Israel Asanya on his feet, being able to pick and pop, move. And then find his find his combinations, uh, use lethal kicking game. Um, so could he hurt Chimaev? Maybe. Maybe. But one thing that I know about Sambo. Okay, guys that have extensive wrestling in Sambo is that they can take anyone to the ground. So if you have good takedown defense for wrestling, then the judo part of Sambo um, kind of gives you a lot more option. It's a way bigger tool bag. Everything else, they take something away. If you're a black belt in jiu-jitsu, then you're missing the other half of the judo. So your ground game is great, but what about the throws? What about the takedowns? What about the leverage on your feet? Okay. But with Sambo, they took judo, added wrestling, and they added folk wrestling from all around Russia, but they also added all of the mystery school wrestlings, man. You know, like the stuff that was left over from Alexander the Great. So they have Greco-Roman. They have Russian folk. They have judo. They have Mongolian judo. Mongolian wrestling. The, the remnants of the Tatar Empire. They add Brazilian jiu-jitsu on top of it. They add Muay Thai and kicking and striking. Just be, There's no one Sambo. There is, a, there is a Sambo that people learn. There's a Sambo that you agree upon. There is the non-striking Sambo. And then there is the combat Sambo that has striking. Okay? But once you learn Sambo, it is easy to learn and incorporate all of the other elements. Okay? Whereas if you're a black belt in Brazilian Jiu-Jitsu, you got to kind of learn another discipline on top of it. But if you know Sambo, you're just picking elements from other stuff. You already have a base for everything. And so the guys that come from the Caucasus Mountains, they have a base of wrestling that adds Sambo on top of that. And then it's just a matter of perfecting the craft after that. Israel Adesanya, on the other hand, is great at staying on his feet and great at striking. But what does he look like on the ground? I don't know. Is he good enough on the ground to be able to... I mean, we know his takedown defense is awesome. 
But his takedown defense, is it more awesome than Chimaev? Because here's the thing. Chimaev's going to be able to stand and trade with anyone, anywhere. He's six foot two. He's got long arms. You want to play the distance game with him, he'll play a little bit. But at some point, he's going to go in single leg, double leg, whatever. You're, it's going to the ground. He's not scared. That whole thing that Paulo Costa did with with standing there and, and not trying to get in and, and letting his legs get attacked and destroyed. and <laughs> I mean, yeah, that was Israel Adesanya executing a great game plan. But there was a lot of that that was in the mind. Paulo Costa got scared a little bit. Yeah, I put the hood on for that. He got scared a little bit. And uh, I don't blame him. So I'm not I'm not saying that there's anything wrong with, with Costa. I'm not saying that he didn't fight a great fight. It, is, it just, I, it, in order to beat Israel Adesanya, you needed more. And he just didn't have it. Maybe if they roll it back and, and it's Israel Adesanya, Paula Costa 2 after Costa destroys four or five people in a row. Maybe then, yeah. Maybe then, um You know, he might be a little bit better. He has a reach disadvantage, Costa did. But Mike Tyson had a reach disadvantage in every fight he ever fought. Did Mike Tyson not know? What's the secret? It's the uppercut. Now, who has got the most lethal right-handed uppercut in MMA? Hamza Chemaev. So, but he's also, he doesn't have a reach disadvantage. Or if he does, it's a negligible reach disadvantage. You know, anything, what, if, if you have anything under three inches, it's negligible, right? Uh, I mean, it's a, it's a considerable advantage, but as far as you're going to be able to land strikes at, around, I mean, the distance game, when you start getting to five, six inches of reach disadvantage, then yeah. But Hamza, Hamza I don't think, has got that. So, so. Is Israel Adesanya so quick and fast that he's going to be able to outrun Hamza Chemaev? That's the question. That's the question. If you think that Israel Adesanya can stay on his feet versus Hamza Chemaev, then Israel Adesanya, we have to, we have to go with him. He fights. He's been fighting bigger dudes, and he's been dominating on the best stage. You would have to lean that way. If you think that Hamza Chemaev can take him to the ground, then you have to go. The Sambo, this is what we're learning with the guys from the Caucasus Mountains, is that once you're a master of sport, a Sambo, and you have anything else, it wins on the ground. So if you're a, so Hamza Chemaev, if you're, Whatever, whatever he is, a blue belt in Brazilian Jiu-Jitsu. What I mean, you're you're you've, you've got some Brazilian Jiu-Jitsu plus Sambo plus wrestling. You're taking people to the ground. You are. You're taking people to the ground. The only people that can stay are the people that are so fast and quick that they'll be able to pick and pop you. Boom, move, boom, move, boom, move. So that's the question. Is Adesanya's kickboxing so beyond the ability for Hamzat to close the distance to take the take the fight to the ground. That's the question. And we know that with Israel Adesanya's big titty, <laughs> it, it, it probably cheating. Probably taking some, some juice. I've seen online about the juice issue. Is Israel Adesanya on juice? Probably. Probably. You're probably at that level. It's a matter of time before people figure out how to start cheating again. Cheating is going to happen. This is this is a thing. This is a this this is built into sports. It doesn't you don't have to go to gyms very long and and have meathead friends before you realize how prolific this thing is. The more money you have, the more money that's on the line, the better at cheating you are because you're able to have have like have pharmaceutical companies in the pocket. Pharmaceutical companies are in on this. The Olympic committees, the the 
international anti-doping agencies are all in on it with the pharmaceutical companies because they want to, they have interests in all supplement companies and whatever else. It's all how it exactly works in the minutia of the mechanism, I don't know. But what I do know is, is that the more money that's on the line, the more money that the athlete has, the better at cheating they are because they're getting stuff that's not available to other people. And they work in concert. The, the anti-doping agency and the pharmaceutical companies that are making the PEDs are working in concert. Sometimes it's the same doctors that work at both places. Why don't they just make shit legal and why don't they just have a standard to make performance enhancers that are healthy and that people can use? I don't know. I don't have to know. But to say that the fact that he got one big titty and one little titty means that he's clean, that's, that's not exactly true. You can go to More Plates, More Dates, Derek. He does a great pharmacological breakdown of this. But from me seeing meatheads in the gym, gyno doesn't work equal. Gyno, sometimes one gets big, one gets little, one gets bigger, one's littler. I mean, it's, it's, it's lumpy. Even So, girls, boobs. Girls, natural girls boobs one's bigger one's little one grows first one catches up later that that's that's nature all right so if israel adesanya can get away with cheating and fight hamzat shemaev maybe he's got the advantage i don't know typically the guys from the caucus mountains aren't known for cheating they're just known for for perfect technique and mastery of multiple disciplines that directly impact their efficiency and ability to win MMA matches. So, so uh, what do we got to say? But if I had to bet money right now, gun to my head, hey, Henry, make a prediction. I would go with Hamzat Chemaya. I would. Because now that Israel Asani has got a big titty. He's got to probably get up, get clean for a while. He's probably going to get looked at. You know? So, they're both not cutting a ton of weight. Yeah, it'd be real interesting to see. Um, I mean, after Adesanya's performance, you would, you know, your, your, your recency bias would be like, man, he looks so good. But I think that Hamzat would have ran through Costa the same way. It would have went to the ground most most likely, but so Israel Adesanya versus Hamjet, Hamzat Chemaev, I will go Hamzat. Um, but do, right now, I mean, do I believe in it enough to, to make a definitive call? Probably not, but that's what I would I would definitely say. So, Khordafiz.